The one marker challenge is simple. What you do is you ignore all of your beautiful marker babies while giving your love and attention to one of them at random. I've seen this challenge done one of two ways. One, you pick your color and then you draw something using that color and only that color. And the other way I've seen it done is where you actually draw your illustration, you know, add the line art and everything, and then you pick your color. So you're forced to use that color on this illustration that you just put time into. So it's a little bit more stressful and a little bit more challenging. So that is how I decided to do it. You can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. I don't. I don't think that the one marker color police are gonna come and get you, okay? It's fine. <laughs> the inspiration behind this drawing was actually a model on Pinterest who was wearing this like off the shoulder <laughs> shirt that was tucked into her high waisted jeans and it had these massive puffy sleeves and I just was like, I need to draw that. <laughs> I ended up adding some like creative liberties, but <laughs> I was just very inspired by the poofy sleeves. Kind of reminded me of Ariel's like pink dress. I don't know. <laughs> I was just excited to draw it and uh, I changed the character's um, hair and everything so that is all just something that came out of my head when I was drawing it. I felt like it fit well with the big round sleeves. I added square sections to her hair. I don't know. It felt different. It felt I don't know, <laughs> just something I felt like doing. And for her shirt, I decided to add this cute little pattern. Very simple and geometric, but um, I wanted the design, I wanted the line art actually to have a little bit more substance to it since I'm only gonna have one color. Um, I'm gonna be very limited with my details, I think. So I was like, I'm gonna add in some more something <laughs> to the line art. And so that's why it's in the sketch. And I also changed her mouth. I wanted her to be a bit happier because her hair is so like explosive. I wanted her personality to sort of fit that. So I moved the tongue up a little bit and I feel like that really, I don't know. More, it not only made it a little bit more realistic because I realized you don't really stick your tongue out the way it was drawn originally, <laughs> um, but now it's a little bit more, you know, wah, like that. <laughs> Here I am adding in the line art. The glasses were kind of stressful. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done line art on a pair of sunglasses, but whew, like hold your breath. <laughs> Take your time, especially when they're complete circles. Although I find it a little bit more difficult to draw the sunglasses that are a more aviator style just because that shape is a little bit more foreign to me. Um, but you guys have been super helpful with this because <laughs> whenever I do a, like a hashtag draw me with waffles, that's where I draw um, one of you guys on Instagram. Um, <laughs> You all have glasses, <laughs> so you're really you're really challenging me. <laughs> so I feel like 85% of you wear glasses, so it's been a really good exercise for me, and I've been getting a lot better. So these wonderful glasses that I've drawn in today's illustration are brought to you by you. So thank you. <laughs> which is kind of funny because I have this problem where whenever I would draw like my friend who has glasses and I didn't have their like a reference photo of any kind, I would draw them and then I would show it to them like the next day. I'd be like, hey, look, I drew you. And they'd be like, well, where are my glasses? Because for some reason, I just don't remember that people have glasses. It's like, I don't know. Maybe that says something deep about what a great person I am or something like I see the inside of you I don't see your outside appearances <laughs> That's that's can't possibly be true. I, I, I don't understand. There just may be something wrong with me But I just never remember that someone wears glasses I'll if someone comes to me and they're not wearing the glasses I'll be like whoa you look completely different, but when it comes to me remembering I'm like I don't remember who wears glasses and who doesn't that's just something I've always had a problem with <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has that problem I would like to know if you do because I feel like that's really, really random and really, really weird. Anyway, <laughs> once I had finished drawing the illustration, it was time to pick the marker. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'll be using these Ohu markers. I got the 80 set, I think, and they're really, really cheap and I really like them. <laughs> anyway, for picking the color, I didn't really do anything special for this. I just closed my eyes and reached in and grabbed one. When I picked this color, which happened to be Marigold, I was not excited <laughs> um, because I've done the one marker channel before and I had a yellow color and I was like, I've already done this and I was tempted to just put it back and like refilm it and I'm like, no one will know. I can just edit that out, but I didn't. I stuck to it. I used this color. I 
colored an entire illustration with it. Um, and uh, another little tip for you, number 24, Marigold in Ohu is the perfect Charmander color. In case you didn't know, you're welcome. Before I even started adding color to the illustration, I made a couple swatches and then I really wanted to test what I'd seen done in a couple places is that they use rubbing alcohol and they mix it with the marker and then you can get like a lighter tone. So I just swatched that out to see what kind of colors I could get. Well, not colors, <laughs> tones out of the same color that I could get. That way I have a nice reference sheet as I start adding the colors to the actual drawing. Going into this before I even knew what color I was using, I had this idea that I knew the glasses were gonna be just the darkest, most saturated version of whatever color I got. So that is the first thing that I colored. For like the skin and the hair though, I was, I really fought myself about it. <laughs> Because I really wanted her to have like a dark skin tone that would like contrast with the light colored hair. But because the glasses had such a thin rim, there really wouldn't have been enough like white space between those two dark colors. And I really wanted the glasses to pop, like I said earlier. So I decided to use the lighter color for the skin while using the rubbing alcohol to lighten up the marker. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I think one of the most challenging parts of the one marker challenge is that I really had to like take a step back, look at the illustration and decide where I wanted the darkest tones to be and where I wanted the lightest tones to be. And I think that's just a really good exercise in general, but it was definitely challenging. And I experimented with a couple things and found that they didn't really work. Like I tried to do an ombre effect with the hair, but I wasn't able to get that dark tone at the bottom to really lighten up as it went. It just, I needed like, or it was the paper I was using maybe, um, but it really wasn't working. So I had to go over that again with just the marker and I didn't want her hair to be like that one solid dark tone, but it's kind of what just had to happen. And the hair I think is something that I spent a lot of time on. And because they are alcohol-based markers and you're able to layer them, I go over this hair so many times trying to get some like tones and like different shading to go with it and like give the hair more texture and more, you know, hair-like because I did go very simple style with those like square blocks of hair. So I really wanted there to be some more detail in it by adding like multiple, like I went over like the same little small sliver of section of the hair over and over and over again to get it to go darker and darker and darker. And there is a limit to this. So there was a point where it was like <laughs> fruitless, but I tried very, very hard and it was really fun. And I am still, I would consider myself very much a marker noob. I've probably only drawn like, <laughs> five things with markers that I would consider finished, mostly just sketches and things. So when it comes to like blending and layering, that's something that I am very, very new to. And I think this was really, really fun and a very good exercise. And I, I feel like I say that a lot, fun and a good exercise. And there's nothing fun about exercise. <laughs> I don't know. When it comes to art exercises, I guess there's fun. After staring at it for a couple more minutes and trying to decide whether I wanted her top to be very, very dark and saturated or her pants to be very dark and saturated, I decided to go with the pants um, because I think it really, it balanced the piece a bit better because her hair was so dark. And then I put the dark color down at the bottom of the illustration and I feel like it just made sense to me. <laughs> And because I colored in the pants with such a very simple flat color, I didn't go over it very many times. You're able to see the contrast between how many times I went over that hair and darkened it up and darkened it up and darkened it up compared to where the pants are the actual like color of the marker. Like when you put down one layer, I guess. I guess they're all the same color of the marker, but the more layers, the darker and saturated it gets sort of thing. <laughs> and then for her top, I decided to color in the little like little details. Well, what are they like? I don't know. They're sort of like crosses, but they're also like flowers. I don't know. But just the shapes. I colored the, the shapes in with the marker. Then I went over the hair a couple million more times, <laughs> trying to darken up like the sections that would be more in uh, shadow. And a problem I have whenever I draw anything is that I always put it sort of off center on the page and it bugs me. So there's a little cheat and I drew a circle around her to more center her in the piece. <laughs> well, center her on the page. And I decided to color that in. And since I only have one marker, 
I had to make some sacrifices and I wasn't able to color directly up into her hair because her hair is so dark and I'm going to be using that dark marker. So what I did was I just left a little space between the character and the circle shape. And it, I, I really like the way this looks. I feel like it's very fun. Um, it has like almost a glowing effect, like she's popping out of the page. I, I really like that. I think it was fun and I'm glad that I did it because I did think about it for a long time. I'm like, am I ready to commit to this? And I did and I'm happy I did. <laughs> Another thing I did to add a bit more detail since everything's the same color is I added freckles um, because her skin, honestly using the rubbing alcohol, I feel like it didn't really interact with the paper very well and it like caused it to like bubble, that's not bubbles, not the word. Like the fibers of the paper were like beating up into little balls. So <laughs> I wanted to like try and hide that by adding in the freckles. It's like a texture and it's gonna hide the awful texture with a different texture, yay. And while I liked her top being solid white, I feel like it was distracting from that um, bright white stroke that was around her from the circle. So I went in with a little bit more rubbing alcohol and the marker and just shaded that in just ever so slightly. And I think it really, really helped. It made her pop as a character and it was a little bit less flat. And I really liked that about it. And for the final little things that I did was I added a little bit of shading to her pants just to add, you know, more depth. And then her hair was still, even after going over it, I guess a good billion times, I, eh, I would decided to go over it again with the liner, which I don't know if that means I failed the challenge or cheated or something, but I like it better now. So <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> I just added like strands to make it look more like hair, basically. So, And then I had my one marker illustration I'm very happy with it and yeah I think it was really fun and I, I like the perkiness of it and I feel like the color really suited it even though I wasn't super excited about the color in the first place. Anyway I took a picture of this before I had colored it so if you want to like pick a random marker that you own and color the same illustration and see how yours turns out I'll have a link in the description where you can you know download that line art and try it yourself and i would love to see what you come up with anyway thank you guys for watching um this was really really fun and yeah i had a blast so i hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles bye